My name is Tyler and I'm the owner of Pina Plumbing. I've been a plumber here in Marin County since 2006. It's April 26th, 2021, and the Water District has just announced a stage one drought. A popular topic my customers are asking me about is hot water recirculation to reduce water waste. So I had these small plumbing fixtures 3D printed and I will be using them to help me explain how a hot water return line works or how to reduce the wait time for hot water. So this is an overly simplified example of a typical residential plumbing system. But for the purpose of this video, this is all we really need. So let's picture out here, this is your street. You park your car, whatever, front of the house. Water line comes from the street. There's a meter out at the street. The water line enters the home. The cold water line enters the home. Uh, on its way to the water heater, it may or may not branch off and feed fixtures on the way. Uh, I don't have another fixture, but let's just pretend there's a tub or something there. Eventually it runs over and it goes into the water heater. So the water is hot inside of this tank. Uh, you're over here in the bathroom and uh, gotta wash your hands. You turn on the hot tap on the faucet and the water travels from the water heater all the way. It might branch off and feed another fixture, but the water has to travel all the way through this line to your faucet. Now, if you looked up this video, chances are that you probably are waiting a long amount of time for hot water to reach that fixture. Whether in your own home, it's your kitchen sink or a master bathroom sink, or maybe a master shower, whatever it is, this run of pipe from the water heater all the way to that fixture uh, is a long ways away. Uh, some of my customers wait a minute or two for hot water to arrive. So how do we shorten that length? In the first method I'm going to explain, we're going to assume that you do not have the desire to add a dedicated hot return line uh, or the money to hire us expensive plumbers, and you want a more simpler solution and you don't mind having a gush of hot water when you go to use the cold water at your furthest fixture. Uh, the first method is achieved using a, uh, a system called the Grunfos Home Comfort System. I'll provide a link in my video um, description. And basically a pump is installed on the water heater at the top of it. And then at the furthest fixture, there's a, there's a special valve that you install on the hot and the cold line, which creates a loop out of the cold line going to the water heater. So what happens is, is you put the pump on the water heater, you turn it on or you put it on a timer, usually when you're home, uh, like when you wake up and then to when you go to bed, it pushes hot water through the hot water line, hits the faucet, and then it actually pushes the hot water back into the cold water feed and pushes it back towards the water heater. So that's one way to achieve a hot water return line. Um, it's the lowest cost and the easiest thing to do. The trade-off is that now your cold water line is full of hot water. So you have to run the cold water on the faucet to, um, and it'll be hot for a while until you actually get cold water. Uh, People typically don't mind doing that. Uh, the trade-off is very small for getting instant hot water. Um, so that's method number one, assuming you don't want to install a dedicated return line. If you have a traditional tank water heater and you have the opportunity to install a what is called a dedicated hot return line, which is this stretch of pipe here. This is the best method, it's my favorite method, and if it's in a, like a single story home um, and there's a crawl space and you can easily add the line, it's well worth it. How this system works is uh, a pump is installed on the water heater and this line here is actually plumbed back into the bottom of the water heater. So on a traditional tank water heater, you've got connections at the top, you've got a hot going out and a cold going in. And then on the bottom, there's a hose bib down here by the burner. You actually remove the hose bib and you plumb this hot return line back into the water heater with a pump, which looks like that, I'll show you later. And the pump pushes hot water back into the water heater. It makes one big loop, it goes out, goes all the way down, back to the fixture and where you've teed off. So this is usually like in a crawl space or in the walls or something. You've got the hot water line, which feeds the faucet. Before it reaches the faucet, you actually branch off of it and run 
a water line all the way directly back to the water heater, creating one continuous loop. That pump on the water heater is, again, uh, you, you usually like to set it on a timer, uses less electricity for especially when you're asleep or at work. That, uh, that pump is continuously pulling hot water through in one enormous loop. So what might have been a 30 second, one minute, two minute wait for hot water is now almost instantaneous uh, because there's already hot water in these lines. And um, the cool thing about that is you've got this big loop happening. So not only is it at the furthest fixture where you've been waiting the longest, but other fixtures along the way, instead of waiting for hot water to travel from this pipe, all the way to there, it's now just waiting at this point to there. You've already got a constant supply of hot water traveling through these pipes. Um, that's the cleanest way to do it, and my recommendation for a tank water heater. To achieve such a thing, you would use a pump that looks similar to this. The brand is Grunfos. Uh, the pumps range in price anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to th three, four, five hundred dollars, depending on the setting. For example, uh, if your house is uh, really long, and there's a really long stretch of pipe, or if there's multiple layers to your house, you have to size the pump appropriately. Um, your local plumbing professional or even Grunfos can uh, uh, help you size a correct pump. Lastly, I did want to cover tankless water heaters. Right off the bat, I want to disclose that a tankless water heater has commonly been mislabeled as an instant water heater. This has led to a lot of confusion in the industry but um, a tankless water heater creates the water instantly. You turn on the faucet and it says, okay, someone's using the hot water and it kicks on and it starts creating hot water. However, the hot water it creates still has to travel from the tank water heater all the way to that fixture. That being said, almost every single brand of tankless water heater now offers a model with an integrated hot return pump. They know the demand is out there, and so instead of uh, adding a third-party pump, now a lot of the tankless units, you spend a few hundred extra dollars, and you can get a model with a built-in hot water return pump. You still do have to have a dedicated hot return line to utilize those. Some manufacturers do support the crossover valve, which is the first method that I covered in the video, where you do not have a dedicated hot return line. You only have a cold and a hot line. Uh, that is supported by some manufacturers, but I still recommend installing the dedicated hot return line. It works the same way as your tank water heater with a pump installed. Uh, the integrated pump uh, is constantly pulling hot water through in a loop and you can turn on your furthest fixture and have instant hot water. The reason why I'm a big fan of tankless water heaters is the built-in pumps can be programmed and you can, you can set several parameters on the tankless water heater. Uh, you can set it up by a timer, so you can have it recirculating hot water uh, from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. or whatever. But the setting that we use at my household is uh, called like a smart mode or something like that. Basically, the tankless water heater creates an algorithm designed just for you. Um, it, over the course of one week, it keeps track of when we turn on the hot water and then it uses that data to predict for the following week when we're gonna need our hot water. Um, humans tend to be creatures of habit, uh, so it tends to be a pretty accurate way to have hot water on demand instantly, but saving electricity. Um, it knows that we're not awake at 3 a.m. unless my one-year-old daughter has been crying, in which case we have to wait a while for the hot water to get there because it wasn't expecting that. There's other options. You can use uh, small push buttons that look like a doorbell. I've got a few here. These can be installed at the furthest fixture and you can push that button and it triggers the hot return line. So you push that button when you're about to step in the shower or something. Um, you wait a minute, boom, you've got hot water there ready to go.